What is up, MFers? If it's your first time watching the show, Michigan Football Report, MFR. That makes you an MFer for watching it. Want to welcome you in. I've been getting some people complaining, saying, James, you've only done a few videos the last few weeks. What's going on? And so I want to make more videos. So if you want to make more videos, you got to let me know. I got to justify it to the uh, studio staff here at Chat Sports. I've been, you know, downgraded to podcast studio C in the basement of our office. Nevertheless, go ahead, comment more below. If you want more videos, I've been putting out like one and a half a week over the past three weeks or so. Just comment more. I want to take this into my staff meeting on Friday and say, look, the people want more videos and why you're here. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe. It's youtube.com slash Michigan TV. Hit that red sub button below the video and you will know every time we have a new video and especially if we start doing more. So comment below. Want to get into the top story of the day. A guy no one has ever heard of. Maurice Linguist has been named Michigan's new co-defensive coordinator. Literally. We got a Cowboys short show here at Chat Sports. Went over to Tom, our Cowboys guys. Hey, Maurice Linguist, never heard of him. All right, factual statement he made, uh, probably. All right, I'm kind of joking there, but this is not anyone who is on anyone's radar. I know the blog boys will claim. Well, I alluded to new candidates emerging, like they always do, like they act like they had this name out there, but no one knew this person was a candidate. But the Cowboys were not trying to retain him by any uh, stretch of the imagination. They hired a passing game coordinator on the defense last week, and Linguist has been out there looking for jobs. So he comes in with Mike McDonald as the co-defensive coordinator here for your 2021 Wolverines. And what really makes this uh, staff incredibly young here for Jim Harbaugh, defensive backs coach for the Cowboys in 2020, Linguist is, another coaching hire in his mid-30s. I haven't, I haven't nailed his exact age yet. If his birthday is in the next two and a half weeks, that makes him 36, 35. If it's not, he's 36 years old. Uh, but nevertheless, the 11th best passing defense in the NFL in his one season with the Dallas Cowboys. He got a little, uh, got a little praise for developing a rookie cornerback for them. Got, uh, you know, with, with not much on offense going on there. The 11th best passing defense, not that bad. But he wasn't being retained, so it's not like you're stealing away from the Cowboys. To make him co-defensive coordinator, I think it's a risk by Jim Harbaugh. I really do. You've got Josh Gaddis with no play-calling experience prior to the 2019 season, has gone mediocre at absolute best and disastrous if you probably want to take it for what it is that the Michigan offense in the, what, 13, 6, 19 games guys has been defensive offensive coordinator. It's been bad probably, I don't know. 65 70 percent of them so you've got a first time play caller and Gaddis apparently come back for his third season although i still think jim harbaugh is certainly out there recruiting new coaches we get a new name here in mo linguist but as you see across the bottom of the screen coach the the cowboys defensive backs in 2020 this staff is super young i want to kind of just read off to you what the staff is going to look like going forward with a new co-defensive coordinator who's 36 years old don brown bob shoop Mike Sordich, they're out on the defensive staff. So you take uh, your three oldest members of your staff, on defense at least, they're out, and you replace it with a bunch of guys in their early to mid-30s. So Mike McDonald, was he 33 or so? Mo Linguist, 36, your co-defensive coordinators. Linguist is also going to be the cornerbacks coach for the Wolverines in uh, 2021. Safeties coach George Hilo. Early to mid-30s as well. Coming over, special teams coordinator from University of Maryland. This was just announced yesterday. Sean Nua is maybe back. Maybe. But who knows? Things are changing every single day. He's in his mid-30s. Brian Jean Mary, he's in his early to mid-40s. I think he's like 42. And I don't know if there's a guarantee he's coming back at this point, right? There, there's still certainly some questions to be, uh, to be answered right there. So that is the staff that Jim Harbaugh has coming back on the defensive side of the ball. On the offensive side of the ball, uh... Ben McDaniels is out. Mike Hart's in. That's the only change we know of so far. Jim Harbaugh reportedly going to be the new quarterback's coach. Let Mike Hart focus on running backs. His son, Jay, uh, Jim's son, Jay, moving over to exclusive special teams. So that is the staff as we know today. I still think there's questions out there on Josh Gaddis. Certainly there's questions on the two defensive uh, holdovers in Sean Nua, Brian Jean Mary. If these new co-defensive coordinators want to bring in somebody else, certainly Nua and uh, – BJM might be heading out after uh, after these guys get in, get into the role, and we'll see what happens with them. But we'll let's teach you guys a little more, give you a little more insight into what we're getting in Mo Linguist, right? 36, 
2007 Baylor grad, played football there. He's been around, right? He's been around the block. 2007, he did a grad year at grad assistant year at Baylor, went on to Valdosta State for a year, three years at James Madison covering the, you know, coaching the safeties, then Buffalo as DB coach. This is the University of Buffalo, not the Bills. Uh, and then defensive passing game coordinator for a season in two, 2013. 2014, he goes to Iowa State. There in 15, got the defensive passing game coordinator role there as well. Was at Mississippi State with Florida coach Dan Mullen in 2016. Minnesota in 2017 is defensive backs coach and then cornerbacks coach at Texas A&M 2018, 2019. One season under new Cowboys coach Mike McCartney, uh, McCarthy in 2020. So that's his, his background, right? There are some people out there that say he's a good recruiter, right? I'm just taking it for what it's worth. I don't have a ton of information behind him. He was the primary or secondary recruiter for nine four- or five-star commitments in the two cycles he was there uh, at Texas A&M. was also the primary recruiter for a five-star, Jalen Jones. Uh, he was the number 19 recruiter in the country in the 2019 cycle, according to 24-7 Sports. And that was the eighth among SEC coaches, but – that year ranked higher in their recruiting rankings than every single Michigan assistant coach that year outside of Chris Partridge, who is now the defense co-defensive coordinator there at Ole Miss. So why don't I ask you guys this question? Yes or no? Go down in the comments, type Y or N. Do you trust Jim Harbaugh's hiring, right? Last year, I think you could probably call it a failure, right? You brought in Brian Jean Mary. What do you got out of him? I'm not really sure. You brought in Bob Shoup off the field issues that might come back to burn Jim Harbaugh one day if they're actually revealed. Uh, he never actually coached a game, so Michigan went without a safeties coach this entire season. Great, uh, great planning there by by the Wolverines. So give me a yes or no. Do you trust Jim Harbaugh's coaching hires? I'm saying no because you have whiffed on an offensive coordinator in Gaddis from what I've seen so far, and it seems like he's just hiring the youngest guy with experience that maybe can make an impact on recruiting. I think they've gone too recruiting heavy and not enough guys with proven uh, experience and definitely certainly not uh, proven play callers with two – First-time play callers on the defensive coordinator side, Cody sees, and then a first-time play caller in Josh Gaddis reportedly re returning for his third year in that role. So, as I said before, George Hilo is the staff announcement that came out yesterday. He's been the special teams coordinator at Maryland, and he will be the new safeties coach at Michigan, replacing Bob Shoup. So let's look more about uh, Mike Linguist. As I said, 36 years old. He's never been a defensive coordinator. I'm not 100% sure I know what Jim Harbaugh sees in him, frankly, right? I watched a lot of Cowboys games this year. Their defensive backfield didn't stand out to me in, in any way. Um, he didn't have a great track record prior to that that I could see. Of course, you're at Texas A&M, you're at Mississippi State, you're at Valdosta State, Buffalo. So to be the co-defensive coordinator, I guess, but it's not that impressive to me uh, the way I'm looking at it. But the the – the uh, stat I'm putting up here on screen now is I'm self-producing. I got a little uh, little jump there. But only two assistant coaches will be over the age of 40 on this staff, right? You've got 10 assistant coaches plus your head coach on a college football staff. Obviously, Jim Harbaugh is 56 years old. I believe he just turned a couple weeks back. But with Brian Jean Mary and Ed Warner, who's 59, you've got someone who's 59 years old, someone who's in the early 40s in, uh, in Brian Jean Marie, and then Mary, and then you got a bunch of guys in their mid-30s to early 30s after that. So probably have a little bit of a bump in the recruiting. Michigan will probably get these guys out on the road. Uh, you might see a lot more recruits talking about Michigan in the 2022 class after they've basically gone radio silent on that class over the past uh, couple months as Jim Harbaugh's contract situation has been unknown. But a very young staff. I haven't looked at the ages of every other staff in the Big Ten, but I would be willing to bet when all things are said and done, the assistant coaching pool at Michigan will be the youngest staff in the Big Ten by a wide margin. So we'll kind of see how that plays out. But I'll ask you guys this question. Michigan's got 12 games in the schedule in 2021. You got nine Big Ten games. You got a couple of out-of-conference games that they should win. They've got Washington in the second game of the year, a Washington team that should be ranked in the top 20. Give me your 12-game prediction. If you watched my video yesterday, you know I'm at 6-6 six and six on that record next year, which frankly, if I'm right, Jim Harbaugh will be fired as Michigan's coach. Michigan will pay a $4 million buyout after next year, and that'll be all she wrote on the Jim Harbaugh era at Michigan because he can't go 2-4 and four and then return and go 6-6 six and six as the Wolverines coach. So give me a record prediction down in the comments. We're talking the new Michigan football coaching staff in 2021 uh, and maybe beyond. 
Ben McDaniel's out, Mike Harden on the off- offensive side, Don Brown, Bob Shoup, Mike Zorich out on the defensive side, Sean Nua, Brian Jean Mary, who knows what's going to happen, but it seems to be that a Michigan coaching hire or rumored coaching hire is kind of popping up every other day here over the last week and a half or so. So as you follow the show, you follow the uh, the channel, make sure to uh, to subscribe and you'll know every time one of these things happens. Also, I'm not putting it on the bottom of the screen, but if you follow me on Twitter, you'll know about this story about one hour ago. Let's talk some more Michigan football news, though. Luigi Villain, a top 100 recruit three years ago, is putting his name in the transfer portal. So a guy who was injured for uh, early on in his career, showed a lot of promise from an athleticism perspective, but never really panned out to be anything at the University of Michigan, will move on and will no longer be a part of this program. So best wishes to him. If he ends up in a Power 5 program, I'll be surprised, but I've been surprised before Christian Turner yesterday going to Wake Forest. Some more news. Chris Evans, told you about this yesterday, pretty obvious. He has officially declared for the 2021 NFL Draft. I think he could have certainly used another year at Michigan, so I don't know if this is the best move for him because, remember, he set out the 2019 season with an academic issue. He came back as a fifth year when, in all reality, his eligibility should have been up after 2019, and they only played in six games, and he didn't get a ton of carries. He was sharing carries with a bunch of other guys, and so I think he didn't really get what he wanted to out of his return to Michigan, so he would have done better next year. Mike Hart certainly, I think, will end up being a better running backs coach than Jay Harbaugh, but nevertheless, Chris Heavens is headed to the NFL draft, won't be a part of Michigan's team in the future. Well, I'll talk about two more things. Daxton Hill, got a question on this in yesterday's video, and if you watch the show, I told you Daxton Hill is a transfer risk. Six weeks ago, I had him as 50-50 on whether he would return to Michigan next year. I haven't heard anything either way. I don't know if anybody has. And if they're telling you they have, they're probably lying to you and trying to act like they got more insight than, uh, than they do. It's no secret that he was disappointed in the fact that he had no position coach his sophomore year of college. That is pretty brutal. I can't believe Jim Harbaugh let that go on, but it is what it is. So you have no position coach. You have no certainty with what's going to go on with Jim Harbaugh, a 2-4 and four season, a defensive coordinator, Don Brown, who gets strung along and then fired. And then now you have to wait until – just in the past couple days when the Baltimore Ravens lose a game, then the next day they hire uh, Mike McDonald, make that as official as the new co-defensive coordinator. So keep an eye on that one. No new information, right? Back around Thanksgiving time, I call it 50-50. We'll see what happens. I wouldn't blame Dax Hill if he wants to try something new. I don't think Michigan's done right by him so far. But he also hasn't lived up to that five-star potential so far. He certainly showed flashes as a freshman. But as the longer we went on, uh, I think his his play in 2021, 2020 was actually, frankly, a little uninspired and made a lot of errors where he potentially couldn't wouldn't have had he had proper coaching. Last story I want to talk about, 2022 defensive recruiting. If you follow recruiting at all, you know that Michigan has two players in the top 15 prospects in the country that, under any normal circumstance, would be heavy, heavy leans to Michigan. You got Damani Jackson, whose dad grew up in the Midwest, a rabid Michigan fan, the number four player in the country out of modern day in Southern California. He's not giving Michigan much time to recruit him with this new defensive staff uh, coming in. He's been a lean to Michigan since he was a sophomore in high school. And now that we're kind of halfway through his junior year, he's decided to commit this Saturday. So we'll know where he's going in four days. I think it's trending very unlikely that he's going to end up at Michigan. And as such, the guy you can absolutely not lose if you're Michigan, if you're Jim Harbaugh, uh, in, in this 2022 class is Will Johnson the number one player in the state of Michigan, five-star quarterback. He basically got the top two cornerbacks in Michigan or in, this, in the country next season saying that they are a package deal. And, oh, by the way, Will Johnson, whose dad, Dion played at Michigan under, uh, under uh, Mo, under Gary Moeller, went out to California to Damani Jackson's house this past weekend, checked out USC on an unofficial visit, wanted to – see what the campus is like, what life like was like out in California. He said in the past 24 hours that he knows where Damani Jackson's going and they're going to be a package deal. They're only halfway through their junior years of high school right now. There's still a, you know, a year-ish left until uh, they have to actually commit and sign on the dotted line to where they're going to college. So Michigan should and probably will heavily recruit them over the next 11 months. But if you ask me, both these guys are going to USC, and there's absolutely no question about that. So what is the downfall of Michigan stringing out Jim Harbaugh's contract? 
waiting two weeks, three weeks, four weeks after the season to make any move on Don Brown. Wait until after the NFL playoffs, at least for the Ravens, is over to hire your defensive coordinator, now co-defensive coordinator. The collateral damage is that you might lose two five-star defensive backs at a position of the secondary cornerback that you absolutely cannot miss out on top prospects that might be interested in coming to your school. So that is the outcome. That's the collateral damage. And if these guys commit to USC, like I think Domani Jackson will uh, on Saturday, I'm guessing Will Johnson will in the next two or three weeks, then Michigan's going to be up against the eight ball to try and get them to flip their commitments, hope that USC has a bad year in the field, they fire their coach to get them to potentially flip back to Michigan and be part of the roster in the 2022 season and beyond. So that's the latest on Michigan's coaching staff, on some players moving on, and a quick insight into the 2022 recruiting class. Make sure to subscribe to the channel you can by hitting this button right here. I've got right over my left shoulder. And if you missed yesterday's video, I got that for you right here. It's also another Michigan football report video for you right here. Until next time, go blue.